Welcome to Devil's Tower National Monument in Northeast Wyoming, one of the great symbols of the Western U.S. geology. And I believe this was our nation's first national monument. Pretty impressive. Just here in the afternoon, uh, catching some of the golden lighting. Um, we're here on, I guess, the southwest face. We're also um, sort of sussing out our approach to climbing it tomorrow. So I'll try real hard tomorrow during the climb to get some footage as well and probably tag that into a separate video. So thanks for joining me, geology professor Sean Wilsey, out here with a buddy doing some rock climbing, checking out geology. Uh, so thanks for joining me. This is my first time here uh, and it's pretty impressive. And I thought we'd spend this video looking a little bit at the rock type that makes up Devil's Tower talk a little bit about the columns, which are one of the more striking features at Devil's Tower, and then go over a few different ideas for how Devil's Tower formed. Um, because what I was taught classically in my education, even up till even a few months ago um, about the ta Devil's Tower, I believe is probably not correct about how this thing came to be. Um, so let's start with uh, what should we start with? Let's start with these columns here. So as you probably know, um, well, let's actually start with the rock type. That might be the easiest thing to do. So we've got this big talus field here down below. And let's see if we can uh, scramble over here and find a rock face that's in the sun a little bit so we can see some of the exposed rock. Actually, here's a nice nice piece down here. Let's see if we can get this more or less in the sun. So these rocks are an igneous rock called phonolite, um, which is not a rock I'm super familiar with, but basically it's, I believe, high in uh, potassium, um, has a lot of feldspar in it. Let's see if this works here. So hopefully you can see there's this nice big rectangular feldspar crystal. And then more strikingly, we can see that the texture of the rock here is very porphyritic. So we can see that uh, we have these big crystals, um, some up to an inch or two in diameter, but the rest of the material is quite fine grained. There's some little black hornblende needles in here. Um, I can see a little bit of quartz as well. So overall, this would be a, a porphyritic phonolite in terms of its uh, strict classification. Another nice uh, feldspar crystal over here. So that makes this a, with the texture, um, more or less, this has been concluded as being an intrusive rock, meaning that the magma cooled and solidified and crystallized below the surface. Head back over here to my notebook, um, which is over here. So we have the whole tower made of this cons consistent rock type, igneous rock. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the columns that we see up there. And so we've actually seen these in other places and in some of my other videos. So if you've been with me in some other videos, you know that columnar joints or columnar um, fractures like this typically form where magma is cooling or lava is cooling at the surface um, and the cooling fractures which here uh, in most of the tower are oriented more or less vertically those will always form perpendicular to the cooling direction so if for example we have a lava flow um, we would expect the lava flow to have um, it be cool on top cool on the bottom where it's in contact with the ground. And so we'd get a lot of vertical uh, columns there. And that's what we see here for the most part. But if you look closely, and I might be a little bit too close to Devil's Tower to, uh, to show this, but you might be able to see near the base, there's a little bit of a curvature there. And the columns don't come all the way down to this lower pedestal here, depending on which side you're on. But the columns actually do turn a little bit. Um, so even though it, overall looks like it might be a lava flow. There's a couple problems. One is that the, the column 
shifts or changing direction a little bit. The other thing is we have this isolated tower out here. If this was actually a lava flow, this should be connected to a larger body that represents the actual trace of the lava flow. Um, but the fundamental idea here, which is important, is that these columns, these fractures, these joints, will always form perpendicular to uh, the cooling direction. And so if you look at any, um, most at least anyway, physical geology textbooks or other references, heck, even the uh, a Geological Society of America paper, granted it was a few years old, maybe about 30 years old, um, called Devil's Tower a volcanic neck. And that's what I was taught uh, in college. That's what I've been teaching my students for quite some time, is that this is the, the magma conduit, the plumbing system, if you will, for a volcano that was once larger and uh, bigger, and now everything's eroded down and we just have the throat or the neck of this volcano. But let's take what we've learned about um, ver these columnar joints and put it to this diagram here and see if this holds up a little bit. So could this be a volcanic neck? Well, if we reconstruct just a typical stratovolcano profile here, so this is our volcano, um, and then let's have a massive magma. So this would be sort of the throat of the volcano up towards the surface, and this is obviously where it erupts this way. Um, if we assume that the cooling surface would be the outer slopes of this volcano, and again, this is this makes assumptions here, what we would end up with are columnar joints uh, that look something like this. So these extend, come off perpendicular to the surface of the volcano. So on the sides of Devil's Tower, we should have maybe not horizontal joints, but joints um, closer to horizontal than vertical. And then at the top, we might see them fanning out and becoming a little bit more vertical. This is not what we see at Devil's Tower, right? We see uh, these vertical columns and joints uh, moving up and down through uh, this monolith. And so this explanation, in my mind, doesn't seem to match the observations. It doesn't seem to match with what we have there. And so um, what's been proposed as a better model is that this is, and this is the, not the best sketch, I just barely put this together, is that this is some sort of an intrusion. So we've got um, layers of sedimentary rock here, and you can see those as you drive up to the monument. So these are all just layers of sedimentary rocks. And we would need um, this magma body to come up, form a shape, probably similar to what we see at Devil's Tower. And then if it's cooler on top, um, we would expect these columns and fractures to form vertically. Uh, and then depending on sort of the, the mass or the, the shape, excuse me, of, the, of the, the magma body, we might see these things sort of flail out a little bit. So you could play some games with the exact uh, geometries of the columns and the fractures, but this is what Devil's Tower most likely is, is some type of intrusion the shape and geometry of which we probably haven't completely figured out. Um, but this agrees much better with uh, the, the columns and the fractures we see than having a volcanic neck like this. Um, so this would be intruding um, underneath ground that's maybe not horizontal, maybe there was a, actually like a little bit of a, a canyon here or something like that. Um, so that agrees a little bit better with, with the observations. So hopefully that, that makes some sense. But um, beautiful time of day to be here at Devil's Tower. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, taking a little look at the rocks, um, looking at some of the, the blocks that have fallen off. Obviously, one of the big processes here is rock fall. So in those big fractures between the columns, the, uh, we get ice that forms at times of the year. And that freeze thaw cycle causes some of these big blocks to fall and form these big talus slopes here. But uh, I'm excited and a little bit nervous to head up there tomorrow. I'll try to bring the camera and share with you some of the views and scenery from our climb tomorrow. Um, and we should get up on top at the summit sometime in the morning. So thanks again for joining me here at Devil's Tower and appreciate your donations, whatever you can do to support my geology channel. Um, PayPal link under the video description, the thanks button at the lower right of the viewer, and then also on the banner of the homepage, there's a, a link there as well. So thanks again, and we'll see you hopefully next time from 
partway up Devil's Tower and then the top.